Welcome into my recap segment of picking NFL and college games. And I get to talk to my friend, my teammate at ESPN 1000 and a former Green Bay Packers star, John Yurkovich. Yurko, I'm up in Wisconsin last weekend. I got four dudes in Packer shirts recognize me and they're like, we don't want to talk about your crappy bears. We just want to talk about what it's like to work with Yurko because we love that dude. What do you remember about your time in Green Bay? When I listen, when I want to feel good about myself, I go north of the border. That's where they treat me <laughs> with respect. I go there. I go to Jacksonville. That's where they love me. If I want to be hated, I stay in Chicago. So uh, it was fun up in Green Bay. Five glorious years. We had fun. We made the playoffs. Eventually, they won a Super Bowl. They went to another Super Bowl. So they love that squad. And if you play with Brett Favre, you know, times were good. So it was fun. What was Packer Bear Week like up there? Because I know having covered the Bears, that was my beat for several years. Like, they took it seriously. Guys like Glenn Kozlowski, my friend, and some of the Lance Briggs and Alex, they took it seriously. What well, was it I, from your guys' perspective? I think the difference is in Chicago, there's a lot of distractions. In Green Bay, there are no distractions. You know, the only other team you've got up there is UWGB and, you know, their basketball team. That was it. Otherwise, it was Packers, 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 Packers. And then they took care of their high school teams on Friday nights, and that was it. It was all Packers all the time. You get to Chicago, you got the Blackhawks playing, you got the Bulls playing, you've got distractions everywhere. So there's a bunch, there's a thousand other things to think of, and there's a thousand things to take your mind off of football. Not up there. Up there it was, and, and they hated Chicago. They hate Illinois people, I'll be honest. They're nice to you. They're friendly to you, you know, when they see you, but they don't like you. Right? But they'll be friendly to you, but they don't like you. And so it was 100% all the time up there. Um, that's what they thought about is Packers Bears. Yeah, as I was told by one of my friends at Jerry's Bar in Oshkosh, he said, Fibs, that's what we call you guys, yeah. F Illinois bastards. Yeah, that's what people in Indiana call people from Illinois and the people from Michigan call people from Illinois. Yeah, they just don't like you. I don't know what it is. All right, before they we go do it with the F, They can do it with F and Indiana bastards too, by the way. Yeah, no yeah. question. Uh, yeah. Before we go through these games, what is your take on the Bears? Because you were much more optimistic than I was. Yeah. You picked them to win nine games. I picked them to win five. After one week, what's your take on them? Well, I still feel that they're going to be able to compete over the course of an NFL season. You know, you watch the Washington Commanders play. They barely get by the Jacksonville Jaguars. A lot of very average football teams out there. Uh, it depends how much. Uh, so two things will happen. Either you're going to get tremendous quarterback play, and that's going to help you, or you're going to get tremendous defense. I think the Bears right now, the way they're situated, will be able to rely their defense on their defense more than they're going to be able to rely on their quarterback. I still got them sitting at nine victories. They're going to win some. They might not. People wouldn't think. And then they're going to lose again. That's going to make you scratch your head and go, what the hell's going on? You only complete eight balls. You don't think you're going to win a game. Uh, it was a very weird, weird, weird game. But I'm happy the Bears woke up for the second half. And uh, they ended up winning. And I thought they'd had a chance with everything San Francisco had going against them. The quarterback change, the re-signing of the starting quarterback to be a backup. Uh, you know, the, the young kid that just hasn't seen enough football yet. Um, that's why I think it was good for uh, Justin Fields to go through the trials and tribulations last year. Because those are the trials and tribulations that Trey Lance has to go through this year. Justin Fields has already gone through it. So they mustered up an effort in the second half. Defensively, offensively, they did enough. And guess what? Every game is going to be ugly. They're not going to be purdy. Uh, you're never going to consider them the, the offense of the year. The numbers are not going to look fantastic at the end of the year. But they're going to find a way to muster out nine victories, which is a good thing if you're a Bears fan. At least you get to watch your team win some football games. All right. You are the first celebrity picker of the season here. Uh -oh. So let's, let's get right into them. The first game on the board, we're going to do four college, four pro your alma mater, Eastern Illinois at Illinois State. Now, there's not a betting line, but what happens in that game? If you had to, if you had to find one, I'm sure you could find one somewhere. Uh, uh, Eastern Illinois has got a first-year coach. Their uh, old coach was there during the COVID, and he ended up going down to Duke to become their defensive coordinator. Illinois State is run by Brock Spack, former Purdue man, former Wyoming man, 
played in the league for a little bit. He coached me at Eastern Illinois. Uh, Brock Speck is taking his team to a national championship game. I think uh, Illinois State is just a little bit further ahead of EIU right now. So I would take Illinois State to win this game. All right, taking Illinois State. How about Oklahoma minus 11 at Nebraska? First game post the firing of Scott Frost. Uh, Oklahoma minus the 10. Everybody thinks there's going to be a pop 11. here. 11. 11. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be a pop here. I think anytime your coach gets fired, it's kind of it's, – it's like a death knell on the whole football team. I mean, they have literally said that you were not good enough to keep your coach from being fired early on. And obviously Scott Frost wasn't good enough to, to coach the squad that he had recruited. I'll, uh, I'll drop the points. I'll drop the 11 and I'm going to take Oklahoma. Okay. BYU is getting three and a half at Oregon. This is a chance for BYU to prove it's for real. They're two and oh. Yeah. I, I, I don't buy it. Oregon had a, uh, Oregon got embarrassed. Didn't they? The Georgia was that Oregon? Got destroyed. Yeah, they got destroyed. So they're they're picking themselves up by the uh, by the belt loops and trying to figure out exactly what they have at home. This is when you're going to get a superlative effort. I think they uh, they respond at home and uh, you know try to right the ship so they can join a conference eventually because their conference is going to go down the tubes. All right, so you're laying the three and a half with Oregon, and finally, yes. Michigan State at Washington. Washington's a three and a half point favorite. Sparty looking to go three and zero. Oh. Yeah, I, I'm. I just can't figure out Michigan State. Uh, you know they're two and zero oh so far against Western teams. I've been to Pullman. It's not an exciting place. It's a boring place. It's up in the mountains a little bit, so the air is going to be a little thin. So they might be sucking a little wind out there. I just, I think the home team here prevails minus three and a half. All right, let's move to the NFL. This is the first time the Detroit Lions have been favored in 25 yeah. weeks. They're laying a point and a half at home to Washington. I'm not a, I, I'm not a fan of the commanders. I, I, I'm just not a fan of their football team. They barely survived against Jacksonville last week. They're up 14-3. They got Carson Wentz. Not a fan of Carson Wentz either. Uh, I like the Lions. Everybody fell in love with them week one because they watched the uh, Hard Knocks football program. So everybody's like, oh, Lions, this, Lions, that, Lions, this, Lions, that. And then they went over and they crapped the bed. Uh, they're in a little bit easier than they were last week. So I'm taking the Lions minus the one and a half point. Okay. The Patriots are laying a point and a half at the Steelers. Either Mitch goes to 2-0 oh, or the Patriots go to 0-2. Oh, well, you know, they had five turnovers last week. And Mitch mustered up a massive 23 points with those five turnovers. And a couple of them were bunnies down in the red zone where he received the football. There'll be no T.J. Watt rushing the quarterback. Uh, Bill Belichick, the brain of Bill Belichick against the brain of Mitch Trubisky. I'm going to take Bill Belichick every time. So give me Belichick minus the one and a half. How about the Titans at the Bills? Monday night football. The Bills look amazing. They just eviscerated the Rams. Bills are laying 10. Tennessee trying to get healthy here, too, I believe. Tennessee lost. They did. Last they did. week. I think Tennessee's trying to get healthy. They picked the wrong week to try to get healthy. Not against the Buffalo Bills. You're not going to figure it out against these guys. Uh, Bills minus 10. I have a feeling this one could be Bills minus 18, and the Bills are still going to find a way to go ahead and destroy the Tennessee Titans. Completely agree. Lay the points. Bears at Packers, Bears getting the pack at a, a good or bad time, I don't know. Green Bay's laying 10. They get Al Lazard back, but they're not going to get their two tackles back, and Runyon looks like he's not going to play. So it's something you'd want to follow the rest of the week when you look at the game. 10's too rich here. I'm taking the Bears plus the 10. Defense is going to be competitive. They're still trying to figure out things offensively. I don't think the Bears win this game, but I do think they keep it close and they uh, keep within 10 points. Would you be stunned if the Bears won the game? I wouldn't be stunned because the three offensive linemen are down, and that's the strength of the Chicago Bears, their defensive line, their defensive front seven. So I wouldn't I wouldn't be stunned. I, I expect there to be, um, before they write the ship over there, I mean, this could be a 13-10 game. I mean, that's the type of ugliness we're talking about. 
I think when uh, Fuller dropped that interception that one year, it was like a seven nothing game. Yeah. You know, seven to three. So this could be one of these low scoring slug fests uh, that you're going to have unless Justin Fields decides uh, he's going to get out of the pocket. And he's going to run the ball. If he's going to get out of the pocket and then they're going to drop coverage and green Bay had uh, elapses in coverage last week. You know, when that type of stuff happens, usually they fix it for the next week. And it's not like anybody on the bears is scaring anybody yet. I think Mooney's going to catch fire. I think Pettis is a decent player. Uh, Pringle, I think all these guys in Bayless Jones, I think they're going to be able to do something. Uh, week one was not the place to do it. Hopefully from week two on, it's going to be a place where they do it. But uh, yeah, I, I just think it's going to be a, a crap fest. It's going to be an ugly game. Green Bay's offense is struggling. Bears offense is struggling. I think it's going to be close. And 10 points is just way too much. So Bears in the under if somebody wanted a bonus play. All right, we are keeping standings all year. And if you win, you're going to get a $250 gift card to Lucanati's to take your, your kids, your family, your nice. friends to dinner. Beautiful. So I appreciate you, Yurko. I will Surprise. see you tomorrow. You're the best.